with what you might hear as mistakes, he would say, no, there was no mistake. So he was a proponent of Allen Ginsberg, first thought, best thought school. So really, uh, these were not easy to, to tackle because just of the limitations really of the guitar having six strings and using all time fingers. And I pointed this out to him one time and he said, you better find another four strings. <laughs> exactly. So you had to have a kind of can-do attitude to engage in this music. And uh, another method that he used was scat singing. And there are many uh, people who do work this way. I work this way with my band to sing parts to people and get them, you know, to to mimic that. Uh, and also, he was a great whistler. And so often I'd get a call in the middle of the night. <laughs> hey, grab your tape recorder. And then I'll get these little Sony cassette quarters. So it came in very handy to, you know, to follow him around when the spirit moved in to compose. And then uh, he'd whistle. Sometimes it would sound pretty tuneless, actually. It'd be like <laughs> I learned that. <laughs> True. <laughs> but we zealously go off you know, in our corners or wherever we were you know, to study and codify and freeze these parts. And it was once described as, a, as if, like, what you took a deck of cards, uh, there's nothing to do with it. You take a deck of cards, throw it in the air, take a Polaroid snapshot of it, to learn that, and redo the cable. So a lot of these you could actually describe as frozen accidents in time that were codified for all time by the players in the band and assembled lovingly by a guy with more sculptural instincts and musical instincts to make these profound, three-dimensional collages.